Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Welcome back to Sunday morning and the old cookbook show. Today is going to be a long one. It's gonna to be tough going. Um, it's gonna be a lot of talking. We're gonna make three pies. We're gonna make three pecan pies. And if you're someone who doesn't like uh, stories about history and searching through cookbooks, I will link um, in the playhead to each spot where I make the pie, but I'm gonna talk throughout. So good luck on finding it. Before we start, um, some ground rules for today's episode. Ground rule number one. Um, you have to understand that no one, no one person in a eureka moment invented pecan pie. Didn't happen. Like pretty much every recipe we eat um, that we think of as traditional, it's based on prior work. Um, someone looks at a previous recipe and realizes that they don't have all of the ingredients or they're missing one key ingredient, but there's another ingredient where they now live. Often this is tied to migration. There's a new ingredient. What if I stuck that in? Or, hey, I really like this and I really like this. What if I add one to the other? And so that's pretty much what happened here. Every one of the pies that we're going to look at um, is based on prior recipes available in other parts of the world that when they traveled to some place where pecans were grown, pecans were added usually in the place of other dried fruit or other nuts. So that's the first thing. Let's get that right out of the way. Second thing, um, all research is flawed. Completely all research is flawed. My research is flawed. And the reason for this flaw is that there is no one repository of every cookbook and every recipe ever written that is searchable. Um, cookbooks are everywhere and nobody has a complete collection. I don't think anyone ever will have a complete collection. And most of that is that through most of history, um, recipes were written on little cards and passed around or written on scraps of paper and passed around or orally transferred from person to person and weren't written down. So you end up with large gaps in history. And so my research is limited to the books that I own in my own, in my own collection and all of the databases that I spend a ridiculous amount of money every year to belong to so that I can gain access to newspapers, magazines, and uh, university research facility, which is unfortunate that you have to pay for that sort of thing because the whole idea of food is that it should be widely available to everybody. The next thing, pecans aren't a nut. Botanically, pecans aren't a nut, but culinary, from a culinary standpoint, they're a nut, so I'm going to call them a nut through the entire thing. Just know that I do know that a pecan is actually the seed of a droop but we're just gonna call it a nut. And the last thing is, there really is no right way to say pecan um, unless you speak one of the original native languages spoken in North America before Europeans arrived. Then maybe you know how to say pecan, but none of the rest of us do. So what you've just watched me make is custard. Uh, eggs, sugar, milk, and just a touch of flour. And this is our first pie. So um, custard pie, very basic. You find this in cookbooks in England and France and Canada and pretty much all over the world, other parts of the United States, going back into the 1700s. Nothing special, nothing crazy, custard pie. Um, in fact, about six months ago on this channel, you watched me make a walnut custard pie from a Canadian cookbook, I think in 1915. This basic custard base baked in a pie shell with dates, raisins, uh, walnuts, any dried fruit, prunes, all of those sorts of things show up over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. The first time you see this in an American sense with pecans is Harper's Bazaar. Um, the Saturday, February 6th edition from 1886, just called Pecan Pie. And it talks about a rich custard, which is exactly what that is. And pecans mixed in, baked, and then maybe a meringue on top. Now I made this with white sugar because it is a rich custard and custards 
we're always made or we're always made with white sugar. And as soon as you say always, then there's always sort of a caveat. Um, in this time period, recipes were prescriptive rather than descriptive. They often just said sugar, leaving you as the maker to use any sugar that you had on hand. They didn't try to shame you and buying something that you couldn't afford or that wasn't available to you, um, which is completely the opposite today. You get lots of people who, you know, are very, very um, adamant that you have to buy a certain type of nut from this farm grown on this slope or this type of chicken. That didn't happen back then. They just said sugar. But in the recipes for rich custards or any custard, uh, in this time period that actually do delineate what type of sugar to use, it's white sugar. A big pitfall um, of modern interpretations of the oldie cooking is that in the oldie times, everyone used brown sugar. Not the case. Custard, white sugar, had to be. Now, you bring this recipe forward to like 1898, that's the next time you see Texas pecan pie. That's the first time 1898 that in the newspapers, I'm able to find Texas pecan pie. I'm gonna get it in the oven. So I've got a uh, all butter pie shell on a baking pan and I've got a metal pie tin. Um, so this will bake more quickly. The oven's preheated to 350 degrees and there is a pizza stone in the bottom, which is going to give us an incredibly good crust on the bottom of this pie. Now this brings us to September. 1922. Um, and I'm going to call this particular pie the birthplace of the modern pecan pie. This recipe, um, found in a paper from Baltimore, of all places, is the first time that I'm able to actually see a recipe that is a pecan pie that is based solely on sugar. It doesn't have milk in it. It has a little bit of butter, but it is a sugar pie. The key to this is that it's a sugar pie. Um, and, you know, history is littered with sugar pies. So if you go back to a series that we did years ago about the Canadian butter tart, the first butter tart recipe um, written in Canada or published in Canada in a Canadian cookbook is 1900. It's this, minus the nuts. Nuts, walnuts in the case of Canada, show up in butter tarts almost immediately. By 1902, there are this recipe <laughs> with walnuts and raisins. Often it's not raisins, uh, it would be currants, but you get the idea, a dried raisin or a dried grape. Okay, so I'm separating the eggs. Now, I'm, I'm drawing a comparison there, but I'm certainly not saying that one became the other or one came before the other. Uh, we'll probably never know. I'm positive that before 1922, someone who lived in areas where pecans grew uh, natively was taking the standard sugar pie, of which there are many in many different cultures, both English cooking, French cooking, going all the way back. Um, someone must have been putting pecans in. What I am saying is that this is the first time that I've seen it published, um, which is a big leap in the world of cooking to actually kind of finally see it written down. Um, that's always the start point. There will always be stories that, oh, this was done much earlier, but unless you can verify it, it doesn't exist. So the recipe that we're doing is uh, credited to Mrs. Pat Neff. Pat Neff was the governor of Texas. Mrs. Pat Neff does have her own name. Her name is Myrtle. Um, you see this recipe then show up in newspapers for probably the next five years. Um, pretty simple recipe, straightforward. We're going to first, uh, we separated the eggs to the yolks. I'm going to cream in the sugar. And this action of creaming in um, causes some confusion because one of the things you, you learn about the English language is that it's a fairly difficult language and some words have multiple meanings. And this meaning of cream um, has caught out a number of food researchers or recipe researchers. To that, I'm going to add vinegar and butter. Um, the addition of vinegar or an acid component uh, in a lot of recipes through the 1920s, 1930s, 
you see lemon or vinegar, that sort of cuts down uh, the sweetness or the sugariness. Again, I'm using white sugar. Most of the recipes where I start to see sugar specified for this recipe, it's white sugar. Even though, as I said earlier, people believe that in the oldie times, everything was brown sugar. Okay, so that's creamed together really nicely. Now we add and raisins. And we'll just stir that in. Now the twist that kind of takes this out of the more traditional sugar pie, treacle tart type, type recipe is, I'm gonna whip the egg whites and then fold them into the pie. Now this, um, this whipping action of the egg whites and folding it in, that kind of brings it into the territory of a bunch of mid-Atlantic type pies or pies that are kind of called mid-Atlantic. There's one in particular that is a lemon pie and it's kind of a lemon meringue, but instead of putting the meringue on top, you whip the egg whites and you fold them in and it gives it a very nice light texture. It takes some of the sweetness out. So between folding in these egg whites and the vinegar, I expect a, a pie of a light, lighter texture and a much lighter flavor. So this recipe is 1922 and 19, be, just because you have to put dates on things, I would say 1920 is sort of the tipping point. The point where uh, modern industrial agricultural practices were brought to pecan trees. Um, all of this starts in the 1850s with a slave called Antoine. Without Antoine, um, figuring out the exact way to uh, graft a pecan scion onto rootstock, there would be no modern pecan farming. Pecans would still be at the edges. Um, if you had a pecan tree growing on your land, you'd have pecans, but for the rest of us that don't have access to the right climate, um, there would be no pecans. It's just, just the way it is. Uh, pecans are a really strange, a uh, really strange tree, not really strange. They're really strange to understand if you don't understand trees, but they are uh, difficult to grow and it took a long time to figure it out. And it's not until a whole bunch of things happened, collapse of cotton markets and uh, the rising cost of producing cotton. There was also uh, in certain parts of the US South, um, a disease that swept through sugarcane plantations which meant that some of the varieties of sugarcane that were grown could no longer be grown. And a lot of those uh, plantations and farmers were looking for something else. So a bunch of things happened all at once, which leads us to the 1920s when pecans are now available in bulk at reasonable prices that everybody can get their hands on them. They're shipped everywhere and they start showing up in recipes over and over and over again. So this 1922 recipe is gonna be great, I think. By the time you get to 1925, 1925 is the first time that I see in a newspaper or a book or anywhere the mention of corn syrup in conjunction with a pecan recipe. And that happens in a, in a newspaper in Buffalo, just across the lake from us here. Interestingly, I have, you know, dozens and dozens of, of cookbooks put out by Caro corn syrup. Um, the manufacturers of Caro were huge. It was this huge marketing machine. They loved to figure out ways to use their products, their corn products, in multitudes of recipes. And they had giant test kitchens going nonstop, putting out cookbooks, um, jumping all over it. Yet they were really late to the game when it came to pecan pie. You see recipes in newspapers calling for Carol corn syrup long, long, probably 10 years before it shows up in any of their own cookbooks. And then they market, market it to no end um, and they start to tell people that they invented pecan pie, which, you know, total, total garbage. Anyway, so this pie says it makes two pies. I've got two pie shells and we're going to 
get the same amount in each shell. And it's the same thing, I'm using a pie tin or a metal pie tin. The oven's preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I've got it on a cookie sheet, so uh, if it does bubble over, it's not gonna make a mess in my oven. And there's still a piece of stone inside, so we'll get a good bottom crust. Now Myrtle's pie that we just made is essentially the pie you're making today. You're probably using corn syrup instead of white sugar, and you're probably not whipping the egg whites separately and folding them in. You're just mixing everything together, the whole eggs at the beginning. But that's pretty much the pie. And we see that, you know, after 1922 through 1925 and later, that's pretty much the case. That basic pie recipe becomes the pecan pie that you know today. And in a lot of cases, it doesn't call out, um, early on, it doesn't call out specifically caro corn syrup or corn syrup. It just says syrup. And it allows you, the person baking at home, to use whatever sugar syrup you have on hand. And in certain recipes, you see them call out specifically uh, cane syrup, molasses. Cane syrup and molasses are from the same process. Cane syrup is from the very beginning of the sugar making process. Molasses is from the very end of the sugar making process. Calls out both of those two things. Um, by the mid 1920s, early 1930s, you see pecan pie in Canadian cookbooks using maple syrup or maple sugar. You also see sorghum syrup, um, which is my favorite. If you look back on the channel just a couple of months ago, we did a pecan pie and I used half sorghum syrup and half corn syrup. Um, and that was an amazing pie. I really loved that pie. So in this bowl, I have mixed flour, sugar, cinnamon, and cloves. And I'm just gonna give that a mix. So this pie's from 1925, and I'm having a hard time kind of figuring out what's gonna happen here. Um, it's kind of all over the map. There's buttermilk, there's vinegar, there's water, there's butter, there's eggs, there's flour, there's sugar. Um, I don't know what to expect. So, and of course the directions are a little bit, you know, wishy-washy. Just sort of says to combine everything, combine the flour and sugar first and then throw everything else in. I'm at least gonna mix the eggs into the buttermilk before I add them in. So let's get two eggs into the buttermilk. Hmm. Let's throw the butter in there too. Seems like a good idea. Okay. And so what we're seeing in the late 1920s is an expansion of the style and scope of pecan pie. Um, as pecans become uh, more and more available, more readily available and cheaper and cheaper as you know production increases and new machinery is brought in both for harvesting and for shelling, the, um, so the price drops become more available and more and more companies try to figure out how to incorporate pecans into their recipes. You see an explosion of pecan recipes. Vinegar, one cup of vinegar. That's a half a cup of water and this is baking soda. Um, so you see more and more recipes and you see companies like Borden Evaporated Milk get in on the game and they start promoting a Borden Evaporated Milk pecan pie. You see uh, Eagle Brand Sweet and Condensed Milk get in on the game and they start promoting one made with sweetened milk or sweetened condensed milk, which, you know, is pretty much just white colored corn syrup. You know, when you get right down to it, it's like 70% sugar. So um, it's just a corn syrup pie, but I'm sure it, it brings in sort of elements of the earlier pie that we made that is custard. That custard pie, you see that continue into the 1940s and 1950s. Not as often, but you still see it in a lot of cookbooks. Still referred to as Texas pecan pie. Now, this recipe calls for syrup. And in this case, I'm gonna use uh, refiner syrup, which is essentially cane syrup, um, which would have been available in the American South during this time period. Um, this is refiner syrup, so it is partially inverted and what I mean by that is that um, as the cane syrup is cooked down, they add a little bit of acid, and that little bit of acid changes some of the sucrose 
to glucose and fructose. Um, sucrose is a disaccharide consisting of glucose and fructose put together. This just breaks it apart, changes the sweetness level a little bit. And so we'll just mix that syrup in and keep mixing in the vinegar. Where was I with the story? Um, late 1920s, expansion of this pie. You see this pie uh, as a sugar pie, you see this pie as a milk-based pie, as a custard-style pie. Pecan pie is everywhere, um, and it's all over the map. Uh, there's amber pie. Uh, there's pies advertised that are made with molasses, and you see that in the Piggly Wiggly. They're, they, they are constantly advertising their pecan pie. You start to see a lot of bakeries in the 1920s, late 1920s, 1929, I'll put up an ad for one that starts calling it um, old fashioned pecan pie. And if by old fashioned, they mean 1920s, then I guess it's old fashioned. So that mythology of this being like, you know, this really old pie uh, starts early. And I'm not, I have to be very careful. I can only go by the record that I can actually see. I have to be able to look at actual printed material. Um, stories, stories are, are flawed. I mean, research is flawed. We started with that as well. But part of me has to believe that early French settlers in the Southern United States, Louisiana, were already making sugar pie. They had pecans. They were probably combining the two. I have to believe that, but I just can't find evidence of it. And I'd love for you guys to start showing me that evidence. Pick out books pre-1900 that show that. Um, that would be amazing. I got sidetracked again. Oh, so there's an expansion of these pies. They're everywhere and they're all over the map. Then it starts to shrink. Um, by the mid-1930s, you start to see only one pie. And that is corn syrup pecan pie. Essentially, the corn syrup pecan pie that you're probably making this week for American Thanksgiving. That is the pecan pie over and over and over again. That is the pecan pie. Okay, so I knew that was gonna happen. I have to move quickly now, I have to stop talking. In go the pecans. This probably makes two pies, um, but the book doesn't say. So I'm gonna use a larger pie shell. It says to put this pie into Pour this into an unbaked pie shell. Doesn't say what size. And then put on a lattice top. Well, it doesn't actually say lattice top. What does it say? Put strips of pastry across the top. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call that kind of lattice. And into the oven. Hoorah! This day has arrived! Hey friends! Hey Glenn! I will get a fork. Gone through the ages. <laughs> I guess we'll start with the oldest one. Okay. I don't know how I does. Sure. Progression, right? Yes. Um... I mean, that's a pie we've had before. It's a great custard pie, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Custard pie, custard date pie, custard raisin pie, custard nut pie, lots of custard pies. Very straight. You can put a lot of stuff in a custard yeah. pie. <laughs> now, if you are someone who believes that in the oldie times it had to be brown sugar, use brown sugar in that pie. That would be... It would probably taste better to you because you've been conditioned to look for brown sugar. This one I'm excited about. It looks about. a bit like a butter tart yeah. in its texture. It's essentially a butter tart. Oh, I like butter tart. It is essentially a butter tart. Mmm. How much fuller? Is it all butter or is there corn? It's just sugar. None of these sugar? Have, none of Do these them have, have butter? None of these, no, 
None of them have corn syrup. Okay. This one does have butter in it. Okay. I like this one's a milk custard. That's really good. This one has butter in it. That's uh, not amazing pie. It kind of reminds me that how amazing the uh, one with rhubarb is. Mm -hmm. Again, I feel like you could take the base and throw eh, almost yes. anything in it. But we're not. This no, is, this is pecan pie. Apparently, we're just studying okay. pecans. Okay, that's an amazing pie. Again, brown sugar. You want to use brown sugar? Go ahead. This one is, has a completely this, different texture to this it. This one has a yes. Is there a, a topping on it? Is that no? Nope. Making a mess. Which just, is how it even that. Oh, I'm making a mess. What are you doing? I'm a disaster. Choice? There we go. Oh my goodness. Hmm. What is that? It's quite good, but it's very lemon lemony. Apple. Appley. Okay. There's apple in it. No. Okay. No. No. So what gives it that flavor? Did you put something in it that was acidic? It's essentially vinegar and buttermilk. It's vinegar, a vinegar, butter, that's it's interesting. A vinegar buttermilk pie with pecans and a topping. See, I couldn't lie. Lemon, apple, it's the acidity, right? It's got a very pleasant acidity to it that makes it not cloyingly, not cloyingly takes away sweet. the cloyingly sweetness. You're going in for seconds. <laughs> it was just such a surprise. That, okay, it's messy because it hasn't cooled enough. Oh. It hasn't cooled enough. We weren't patient. Sometimes that's what happens with pie. No one says it has to, you have to wait. If you don't burn your mouth, it's fine. <laughs> Everything else is acceptable. Okay. This pie excites me. This pie, if you took the raisins out, put that on the table, I really like it with the raisins. I do too. No, I do. I, I, and I don't like raisins and things, but I do like raisins in that. If you took the raisins out, you put that on the table at the holiday feast, people would say that's pecan pie. I mean, that's exactly what it is. This one is good, but people wouldn't recognize it. People would ask you why you put pecans in the apple pie and where's the apple slices. <laughs> but that's amazing. Now, we've done a fake apple pie before. We did, and it didn't taste that good. Didn't taste that good at all. This is, I'm trying to, clearly. So the buttermilk brings something to it. Definitely the buttermilk brings something to it. Um, a little bit of flour. That's a good pie. Okay, so. I'm, I'm fascinated by that base of the buttermilk and how it, anyway, I'm now, now not focused on pecan pie this. No. I'm going to shake my head and get focused. Pecans. So if you're looking for a non-corn syrup pecan pie recipe, this is <laughs> it. Slaughtering this one too. This is it. This is Myrtle's Myrtle's pecan pie is recognizably pecan pie, and you, it mm. just uses regular sugar. You could use brown sugar. I'm gonna throw up a bunch of recipes that use all kinds of different sugars, all kinds of different syrups. They'll come at the end of the video. Um, I really want to crowdsource some of the research. If you have a cookbook hanging out in a box on a shelf printed prior to 1920 and it has a pecan pie recipe in it that isn't this custard version, I'd like to see it. I'd like to see a picture. Email me a picture of that book because then we can fill in the gaps in the knowledge. And, and it's fascinating because I, I feel like pecan pie, like many pies and many things that we eat at seasonal events, mm -hmm. The one you like best is the one. It's the one your mom your, made. Your whoever makes yeah. them in your family makes, right? It's like yeah. everybody makes stuffing differently. But they're yep. all great, but they're all different. They're you all... can't. Yeah. You can't, you know, diss anyone else's recipe. It's just not the same as the one you're used to. It's but your family. Damn, favorite. these your... are all good. Yes. Yeah. You can feed me any of these, and I'd be happy. Um. I'd be happiest with these two. That's not a pecan pie, but that's the one I love. So send me your research. If you find some research, you find some information, send it to me. I'd love to see it. We can fill out the entire story about this pie. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.